G'day everyone, Conrad Singh here from New Jersey, USA. Um, I'm very happy to be here today and I thank everyone for making a bit of time for me. Firstly, I'd like to apologize for a few IT issues this morning, but we're good to go now and very proud to be here and be a part of the Winning Summit and a, a part of this incredible group of, of human beings that are looking to raise the bar on our industry and, and, and really... Uh, lift the curtain on certain areas that are not often talked about and one of those is my theme today and my word is the word culture. So I'd like to start with a little story and if you have a look at the flags that are at the top of the, uh, the frame here, um, these are all of the countries and places that have somehow shaped a little bit of my culture of who I am personally. So I have a little bit of English ancestry and I lived in England um, once I was done with, uh, with my academic life. Um, I was raised and educated in Australia. I was born in South Africa. I was lucky enough to meet my beautiful wife, Paolo, who's from Mexico, and my two kids, also from Mexico. I spent a lot of years in Japan working there and obviously working with players from that background. I spent 15 years in China, which I think everyone is aware is a very, very strong culture. Somewhere deep in my history, hence my surname, I have the background of India. So that is something, again, with a very strong culture and whether it be the foods. And think of the words that pop in your mind when I'm mentioning these different countries. And finally, right now, I'm based in the USA, uh, which, again, is a different culture. So when, when, when you look at these flags, I'm sure you really, things pop in your mind. Um, it might be, as I mentioned, the language. It might be the food. It might be... Maybe those countries are great at a particular sport. Um, it might be religion. You know, it might be uh, age bands. So when we're talking about culture, we're really talking about everything. What we're really focusing on when we're having this cultural conversation is that it is time to really think about where people are coming from with their opinions, their views, their beliefs, um, their behaviors. So ultimately... That word culture is one umbrella uh, way to put under it all of the different actions and systems and different customs, laws um, that people follow in their daily lives. Um, the social rule of culture is also so important in that that is where we are just today discussing the culture that we create as leaders um, can lead to excellent things. It can also lead to extremely toxic environments, which I'm sure we've all been a part of. And how do you handle that? Um, when you're thinking about culture, you might think about a sports team. So, you know, some of the greatest teams um, in, in, you know, different sports come from a culture of that. And an example I would like to give is the Australian cricket team, which we all know, if we know the sport of cricket, went through a turmoil a few years back in South Africa with a little bit of ball tampering that might have gone on. Now, if you've had time to watch the documentary about that, you will see how that was gut-wrenching to the Australian sports community. It really dug deep and it showed how strong that sport is in our culture. Coming from Melbourne, Australia, I can guarantee you that our city is just, sport is a religion. And so, it's around you all the time, whether it be Australian Rules Football, Cricket, the Australian Open, or the Grand Prix. All of these major events create a culture in our city where people that don't even play sport are really avid about the sport. Hence, today we want to really talk about and dig in on the mission. The mission today with me being here and talking to you wonderful people is that I'd like to make everyone a little bit more aware of cultural awareness and cultural rules and how to embrace people with differences. We need to be in sports communities, whether it be, again, a tennis academy, a club, or we're running a team of coaches. We really need to observe people's beliefs, their behaviors, which will help us to individualize our approach to any problems, issues that may arise and address them appropriately. So this all-important topic of culture, this word culture, again, the attitudes, the feeling of unity, the connection of people, the sense of having a greater purpose, sense of belonging to something, 
the relationships that are built due to the culture that we have are all parts that are just very important in ultimately the value system that our people have internally. We have to remember every decision that we make as leaders or as academy directors or as coaches, it has to have a buy-in from whoever you're working with. Now, to have that buy-in, it must fit within their value system, which is why we're talking so much about understanding individual culture or team culture or even organizational culture. So the objective today is first, we'd like to discuss a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of education on this and later in the session, you know, the call to action. So the what to now. Um, the end goal being creating an optimal environment where everyone can thrive, um, where we are embracing differences, we are open-minded, and we are really understanding that today we're living in a very large migratory world in that the world has never traveled as much as it is now. It is so much easier to travel, and as a result, we need to really embrace these attitudes and differences and more than anything, the behaviors of, of individuals that will be different uh, from person to person. A lot of us here, we're talking about the club cultures. So, you know, we're talking about being able to understand what will work best within your environment and how to really drive and motivate individuals to be the best version of themselves. So motivation is really one word that I believe uh, is very strong when we're discussing culture and ultimately identity. We know that culture is one major part of every individual's identity. And we also know that to develop strong culture, the end goal is really gonna be to understand and embrace differences of people. To do that, we'll need to observe, spend time. We'll need to have a lot of experiences, with those people and arguably go further than just the basic coach to player uh, situation. You know, there is ways to show more cultural understanding, which again, we'll talk about uh, a little later on. But what I'd really like to do is to have everyone just think for a second about how important the off court side is in understanding your people, motivating your players, and their families. And so that's going to take a little bit more, a little bit more duty of care and extension of care than just feeding tennis balls for an hour or, or just seeing that person and passing by. You'll need to go a little further and, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, later on. We should understand that culture um, controls those automated urges um, that people have. So in some cases it could be negative in some cases, it could be positive. Again, an example, I think of a, a, a culture like Italy, and I think of what they've given to the world. Great food, great ice creams, fantastic history. So that is a very positive thing that comes to mind. And so I want to be trying to focus on the positives of all the different cultures, regardless of my own personal beliefs. One topic that I think is very important to discuss is that through relationships and through an understanding of individuals' uh, motivation and culture, we then are able to weather the storm. So what does that mean? That means 2020, we had a horrible year. It was a very difficult year. We all had to find ways to pivot. Pivot became the word that was um, you know, just so bantied around. And so we call it the mental agility. And if you have to make those dynamic decisions and if you have to um, make changes aggressively or quickly, it really is going to come back to the relationships that you have and whether those people, because of the goodwill and the charitable mindset that you've displayed, whether they will stick with you and follow you through those tough times. So we know we're still not through this. We're at the end of it. And key relationships are gonna to have to be the cornerstone of your success. How do you develop that key relationship? You must understand the inner mindset 
of your people, of your clients, of your players, and of the parents, right? So just so, so important. Um, we know, again, there are just so, culture is just such a broad word. There are so many different types of culture. I'm going to break it down into three uh, areas today, which I'll cover later. The building blocks of strong culture. We'll go through that. There is 11 different words that I feel are crucial to having a strong culture. And we should all be mindful of how are we encouraging that in our environment. And finally, identity. We all know how important identity is um, overall in the mindset of the player and that that identity will determine how they feel in the pressure of the moment, in the crux of a tough match, or when it's four all in the third in a you know 40 degree day, which way are they gonna lean? A lot of that's gonna be based on their inner voice, their conversations they have with themselves, which are heavily influenced, as we know, by our culture and by the way we were raised. The reasons why to or why not to are often um, defined by the rules of the cultures that we come from. We know now already that the connectivity that's a part of this culture uh, factor is so important. It gives us purpose. And we know that purpose is the driver to all behaviors. Um, we want to also understand that there are really easy ways to embrace and understand various cultures. And that is through music, through food, through events, through customs, through special dates. And again, that is something I personally uh, make myself aware of. I, I read as much as I can, um, travel as much as I can, and try to understand so that I have personal experiences to discuss when I'm talking to people that are coming from various uh, backgrounds. When we're talking about individual culture, culture can be broken, as I mentioned, to these three parts. Individual culture, team culture, or organizational culture. I want to spend some time on these right now if I can. When we're talking about individual culture, it is deliberate time and effort that we spend with each individual within our team. Again, whether it be the players, my colleagues, um, that individual time allows us to connect and understand the people that we are with. And it goes a very long way to developing relationship. So please understand how important it is to spend time with your people away from just the day-to-day -day environment and create those opportunities for those connections. Um, individual culture is going to need a little bit of back knowledge or backstory information. You're going to really want to understand a little bit about that person um, whether it be a player, what was their previous experience about. Knowing the backstory really helps to create the, the positive um, environment moving forwards. we got to remember that individual cultures are a summation of all of the experiences that have happened throughout that person's life. So whether that be in the home, in the schooling environment, in the religion, maybe there's something there, that we need to understand and embrace and then allow uh, that person to flourish because of our uh, openness towards that. We're talking about building champions and when we're building champions, it's just so important that we know what are the drivers. What are the expectations that that person has of you, the coach, or of you, the leader of the academy, or of you, the parent? It is just so important that our expectations are, are met and that the person delivering are delivering in a way that it is predictable, reliable, and it is consistent. That is another factor of culture. We know some of the strong cultures in the world, um, thousands of years old. Again, the Chinese culture, 5,000 plus years old. Uh, it's a very strong culture. Um, Australia, where I was, where I, you know, raised and, and grown up, very strong but casual, relaxed environment. Japan, Japanese, very different, very academically oriented, very intense, where we know that manners and courtesy and the way you say things means more than what you actually say. So it is just so important that we embrace that because the persona, the identity of our athletes, our coaches, our team members, uh, they are first and foremost individuals. Um, again, 
I think it's just essential that we take that time to get to know people. You cannot fast track a relationship. We all know that. Relationships, they take time. So moving to team culture. Now, whether we're talking about a team of coaches, a team of traveling players, a high school team, team culture is something that is very difficult to create. It is certainly very difficult to change. And we absolutely need to be constantly feeding our culture in order to keep it healthy. So team culture is often top down, which means the leader drives the behaviors. I believe that transparency in expectation is so important. I also believe that ensuring that we call out early anything that is not fitting into the culture that we're creating and we address that before it blows up and becomes a much bigger topic. Team culture, you need to have people leading by example. So once we move away from the hierarchy and we move into the players, it's called a tennis team, the captain, your top players, what they do sets the tone for the young guys coming in. If we're allowing those players to turn up late, finish early, um, not go to the physical, all of those decisions will, in the end, create the culture that is followed. We do know that it is so important when we're talking about new and young people coming into the team that those people have a big brother or an example or a role model. Just so important. So we've heard often that that player does not fit into the culture or that player is too much of an individual for the culture. Or that coach is not thinking about the team objectives. It's all about their objectives. It's just so important that we set from the start the tone, that the culture has to be transparent, has to be pure, has to be clear, and more than anything, has to be repeatable. We know that the awareness we have of our people, their drivers in a team, will end up in a positive situation. So a team being made up of individuals collectively, that is why uh, it is just so important that we also spend time with our individuals outside of the, the hot spot of the season. Um, organizational culture. You know, this is something, you, if you switch on a TV, you'll see a lot of movies about big companies and driven by the wrong objectives. Um, I really believe strongly that having a mantra or having a call to a greater purpose uh, for an organization is, is a very good thing. And so, you know, you might spend some time with your team members and come up with five or six letters that create um, the expectations and the behaviors that you hold to be the highest possible. So it might be words like integrity. It might be words like honesty. It might be words like duty of care. It might be words like celebrations, um, unity. All of those things are what creates a great organization. Of course, in today's world, you know, it's a business world. We're all trying to move forwards and, and grow profit. But sometimes that's got to take second priority to the overall health of the organization. And again, leaders need to put a mirror on themselves and make sure that they're, what their behaviors are displaying and how they are leading is the, what they're looking for within the organization. I go back to the whole point of cultures are big and can be small. And so in a big organization where you're talking several hundred people, there are those people that are the gel of the organization. Often unsung heroes are the ones that are doing the work. They're putting the glue together. And it's important that you recognize those people. I believe that in an organization, um, celebrating achievements, um, highlighting stories of success, which again, they, can, they don't always have to be financial. They don't always have to be trophy winners. They can be people that are displaying the behaviors that you're looking for as an organization. So what we want to ultimately be able to do is assist our people in creating 
the uh, culture that they choose. And so I believe also team workshops, organizational workshops, spending time together to put down on paper, this is what we're going for. This is what our goal is. Not Nothing complicated. One or two goals for the year. This is what we're working towards. Having those words front and center for everyone to see. Um, all of these things obviously are a major part of preparation, spending time on um, putting together exactly what the goals are so that your environment and your atmosphere can be what it is that you're hoping for. We need to understand that, again, the organization uh, either motivates or demotivates a human being. How can we constantly find ways to stay fresh and to continue to motivate our people? So moving into what I believe to be really the, the pillars and the key words that you have to understand in terms of creating the culture that you want in your academy, in your people, individual team or organization. Knowledge is just so central to this. What is the one word that everybody wants to hear? It is their name. So knowing everyone in your group, knowing everyone in your club, knowing people by name, and not only those people that everyone knows, making time to know that those people who do smaller tasks but important tasks, as I mentioned, the glue in the organization. Knowledge about, I mean, you don't want to go too deep, but knowledge about maybe their religion, maybe that's very important. Maybe the knowledge regarding their food and their food preferences. If you have a team event, you need to consider that. You may have vegetarians, you may have people that for religious reasons, they need to consume certain food. That is important. So knowledge, which obviously takes time and experiences to, to gain. Being patient. Now, that is one of the hardest things to do. Listen before talking. So really being able to sit on your hands and spend that time to learn about people and how they operate and how they function. I can give examples of several times where I've worked with big organizations or national organizations and I've really had to spend time to get to know who are those people and be patient with many of them who are very slow to open up. So please give that time. And, and, and remember, one of the oldest, wisest things you can do is just to be patient. Beliefs we've talked about a lot. And beliefs, you know, they can be good or bad. They can be adjusted by experiences but belief system is what we're ultimately trying to impact. If someone believes in what you're doing, whether you're the coach or you're the manager or you're, again, the team leader, they want to follow. People want to follow positive people. People want to follow people that display their belief system. They're proud of it. So your beliefs are very important and that you are open-minded and you're inclusive. All of those things are so important. Being charitable. Being a person that's looking, how can I help more? What more can I do? And remembering that it's not all about dollars. The dollars come, come back. It's the world of karma. So the more we have a strong belief system, the more we give, the more we get. That word of unity. Ultimately, culture is unity and connection. Feeling like we're part of something greater. Feeling like our people are inspired to go out and achieve whatever those goals might be. Remember that human beings are social animals. We want to spend time with other people of like goals. And so that feeling of unity, that bond, is something that we have to try to create. And it might be that we have to come up with a calendar that allows opportunities to create that unity. It might be during the summertime, you arrange a team uh, day out. You might arrange wives and kids day out with coaches. Those things go a very long way in creating strong, healthy cultures in your clubs. Obviously, many of these words are similar. I've used the word understanding several times. And obviously, in order to understand, you need to listen before talking. You need to look before judging. You really need to go further, do your research, find out a little bit of the backstory. What motivates that person? What drives them? 
understanding people is a very special skill. And all too often I find myself um, having an experience with another club owner or uh, another academy director where I walk away thinking that person just doesn't get it. They just don't understand what it is we're doing. They are great coaches. They have knowledge. They have experience. Maybe they were great players, but they just don't get it. They don't understand what, what it is we're trying to do. And we, uh, as we know, are presented with this opportunity now in the world of tennis to do something great. Relationships. I've talked about it many times already. But just building quality, long-term relationships. That is something that is just so powerful and is ultimately the driver for all human beings. We have to make sure that we are aware. Excuse me as I get my charger that we are just aware of the human beings and the individuals within our environments and we are aware of their needs. One moment. Get my charger back on. And so awareness is ultimately what we're talking about. Um, I think many of our great presenters, 40-odd presenters, have discussed the importance of awareness. Behaviors, we've been talking over and over. And remember, human beings evolve. Um, so what's essential is that our behaviors and our expectations are constantly visited. One of the most powerful things that I've ever done is put together uh, a company charter where I'll never forget, we're at the World Coaches Conference in Mexico, and I think it was 2013, the ITF conference. Um, I had my team of four or five leaders there. We spent three days sitting in a quiet room, writing down our company charter. And that was my way of giving everyone an opportunity to really express their own um, priorities, their own drivers within our organization. I wanted to create a positive environment of empowerment where my team feels that their thoughts, their needs are being met. And I feel like that is a yearly or a bi-yearly activity that we will continue to do uh, is to sit down and have charter day. At the end of that day, we end up with a barbecue or a couple of beers and it's a great opportunity. And it comes to our next word, which is experience where people have these experiences that they remember, their landmark moments where we're able to either have an inspirational moment, an aspirational time, or we're able to use those situations of getting together and those experiences to create teachable moments. Um, we're in an industry where you know our team are hungry for knowledge. They want to know how to do things better, whether it be technical knowledge, whether it be you know, back office admin. I've got guys that come to me, coach, I really need to know how to do this better. Could you help me find a way? And so using my resources and my experiences, I'm able to then direct my team to where they need to be in order to um, develop their skill sets. Thoughts. Ultimately, culture drives your thoughts. And we all know that somewhere between 60,000 and 80,000 thoughts per day are had by human beings. Not all those thoughts are positive. Not all those thoughts are negative. So how can we then direct those thoughts in a way that positivity is what they experience, that their inner voice, which we also know is very trainable, um, becomes positive in those quiet moments when we're re reflecting on our team or our organization. The individual thoughts are just so powerful. We've got to find a way to help those to be positive. And finally, that word connections, which has come up several times now. We know the world and humans, we love to be connected, which is what we're doing here at this great conference. So culture creates, as we said at the start, a value system internally that people rely on daily for their motivation. People see this connection factor as a major aspect of culture, but also a major driver of behavior. So it is just absolutely critical that we are constantly thinking about our culture in those three different ways, individual, team, and organizational. Culture, we know, is the driver for all behavior. 
which is essential in the identity of every performer. So one of the things we do a lot at Seneca Tennis Academy with our full-time players and our pro players is we're looking at their profile. What type of person are they? What are their preferences? And how do we need to factor that into their game styles? So we're really talking about culture in the end becoming a part of a tennis player's game style, their identity, the choices they're going to make. When we're looking at this off-court side, we want to know how can we help our players to develop from the inside out. We know that the greater trajectory in a tennis career doesn't come from skill set. Skills are important to play the game, no doubt. But players that are developed from the inside out that are constantly working on their pillars of humility, their pillars of humanity. And again, you think about Rafael Nadal and you know, there's a video on YouTube when he was, I think, 11 years old playing Le Petit or 12 years old. He lost the match and he came off and he said exactly what he said at the Australian Open two weeks ago. I just got to get back to work. It's not the end of the world and I'm going to keep improving. Very hard to have that perspective. And you can see that comes from a very strong inside out approach, uh, identifying his persona as an athlete and identity. And again, it's all about having those key pillars to lean on in difficult moments. So culture is a key puzzle to the overall identity, as we know. And I often talk about this home ground advantage factor, whether it be that we're playing a match in our club or we're a football team and we're playing at home. Why is there that invisible momentum? Why do we have that invisible extra step or that extra emotional charge when we need it? And it's because we feel comfortable in our cultures. So as human beings, we are seeking out that internal culture is at calm, is at peace. We need to, as leaders in this industry, embrace that culture factor. When we have people come to our clubs, trialing our clubs, we want them to feel immediately that they're at home. I asked this earlier, but the question is related to relationships. Are you able to pivot in difficult moments? The work gets done in the non-difficult moments when you're building those experiences and cultures. So what can we do now? Obviously, what is the call to action? We want to make sure that we are listening. We want to be conversing with our people. We really want to make sure that we're open to opinions, patience. We want to make sure that we're respectful of people's differences. Experiences and awareness in the end, will help us to develop a strong understanding of culture. Changing cultures, we know, is one of the most difficult things. And if we get to a point where it's negative, we need to do that. We need to make those changes. Curating behaviors is challenging, but it requires attention to detail. You need to know your people, again, as an individual, as a team member, and within your organization. So obviously, the bottom line is your atmosphere and environment. How important is it to keep that fresh, keep that evolving? Being fresh and evolving means you have a strong secret to understanding your culture. Keeping people motivated, you need to know them well. You also need to have parameters. So what are the non-negotiables within your environment? Make those clear. Address those things that happen that you're not happy with at the time they happen. We know and we're talking about in this conference today that ultimately our mental processes are driven by our identity. We know that. Uh, Mark Jeffrey did a fantastic talk on identity. We must address the identity. Identity is the end game and culture is just one small part of that person's identity. Being aware, which this word's come up so many times. Awareness is so important. Be open-minded. Be patient. Listen. Assess yourself. Have a look in the mirror. And so I'd like to just close up by saying, with the daily training and the daily conscious awareness that we put in, with the daily patience we give to our people, you will become the training which is the ultimate goal of the Winning Summit. On that note, I'd like to say thank you very much to everyone that's listened in. Thank you to Mark Jeffrey and his team at the Winning Summit. 
What a wonderful opportunity for us to connect. If anyone would like to contact me, please do at any time. I'd be more than happy to help. And we'll look forward to putting together some short series of um, training, official training in how we can become better in developing our culture. Once again, thank you everyone for your time. And I look forward to seeing you around the courts.